What if you take Pokemon and make it into a roguelike? Meet Poke Rogue, an insane game that takes two concepts that I love and smashes it together. And somehow it works? Take the team building aspect and all the RNG involved in Pokemon battles, then put it into a roguelike where all you do is battle, get stronger, and try to survive for as long as you can until you eventually lose. Please! Death God damn it! It feels like Slay the Spire or Darkest Dungeon, but instead of cards and tentacles, it's just Pokemon. All the Pokemon, by the way, which is more than Game Freak can say about their latest Pokemon entries. Not only am I totally blown away by this idea and how well it works, but this game takes Pokemon to the extreme. There are no caps for your stats or levels, you can fuse Pokemon together to mix and match abilities and movesets, and all of the gimmicks like Mega Evolution and Terrasilization are in this game. It's literally the Smash Brothers everyone is here meme, but it's all of the mechanics and all of the Pokemon, and so far, I'm loving it. And one of the best parts about this game for me is that it's 100% free, there are no microtransactions, and you don't even need to download it. Honestly, that is one of the biggest reasons for me to play this game. Poke Rogue is a game played entirely on your web browser. I myself am a huge Pokemon fan. I grew up with the franchise since Red and Blue and have loved it ever since. That said, I've always been a huge casual. I've never done a Nuzlocke in my life, I've never done challenge runs, and I've never played a single fan game. There are many reasons for this, but one of the biggest ones for me is because I've never wanted to go out of my way to download emulators or ROM hacks or literally anything to my computer that doesn't come from Steam or other official channels. There is zero setup and no downloads. And I think everyone who's ever played a single Pokemon game in their life ought to try this game. That said, this game is not for the faint of heart. You will lose over and over and over again, just as I have, but that just comes with the territory of the roguelike genre. The point of the game is to try to survive for as long as you can, and to get better the more times you play the game. And normally with Pokemon games, I would hate this idea because the thought of grinding to get back to where I was just does not sound like a fun time to me. But the thing about Poke Rogue, which makes it fun and challenging, is that progress is fast and you don't have to grind. Actually, scratch that, you can't grind. You see, most RPGs have their own inbuilt difficulty slider. If you're having trouble with a fight, all you have to do is grind enough levels to a point where you're strong enough to win the fight. Poke Rogue is challenging because every battle counts and you cannot get away to level up and rechallenge the boss. All you do in Poke Rogue is battle. HP and status ailments are carried over between your fights. And in this game, healthcare is not free. It's like this game takes place in America or something. You start off the game with a thousand bucks, and you're going to be spending a lot on potions if you want to avoid cutting your wallet in half by messing up and having to buy a revive. This makes it so that in Poke Rogue, every move counts. You want to preserve as much life as possible because until you reach every 10th floor where Nurse Joy is generous enough to give out free samples like a Costco booth, you are stuck in a gauntlet that only gets more and more challenging the longer you survive. But it's not all bad when you lose a run. If you're not familiar, a roguelike as opposed to a roguelite means you have some sort of progression that is kept in between different runs. Starting a different run is a really fun part about the game. Not only do you have access to every starter Pokemon from every generation, but you can also draft the Pokemon you've caught in your previous runs. Each Pokemon is worth some amount of points, and you make a starting team that is worth 10 points. The starter Pokemon are all worth 3 points each, weaker Pokemon like Radata or Bidoof are worth 2 points, and stronger Pokemon like Zangoose and Rotom are worth 5. I really like this part of the game, because it captures the fantasy that the Pokemon anime sold, but the games never really delivered, at least to me it didn't. And that fantasy is having a Pokemon adventure start off with any Pokemon that you want. I think a big thing that's missing in the Pokemon games is the freedom to insert your own narrative and story. Almost all the trainers, including Ash in the anime, do not start with a starter Pokemon and play a game to its finish. 
they find or acquire their partner Pokemon through other means and journey with them across the world to complete their own goals. And while Poke Rogue has pretty minimal storytelling and narrative, since it's really only a series of death battles, I still think it's really fun and cool that you can tailor the start of your run to your own preference. One thing I think will get a lot of people hooked to is that there's an egg gacha. After beating gym leaders, you are rewarded with egg gacha vouchers that give you Pokemon eggs of various rarities. There are three egg gacha machines. This one gives you a higher chance of Pokemon with rare egg moves. This one gives you more odds at obtaining a legendary Pokemon to use in your future runs. And this one is a machine that gives you a higher chance at obtaining shiny Pokemon. It's a cute mechanic, and again, the best part about it is that you can earn the pool tickets by playing the game instead of entering your credit card info. But that's all I have to say about why I like this game so much, and why I think you should play it. Let's hop into my first run so you can see how the game plays yourself. Fair warning, this game is already pretty challenging from what I've heard, even from Pokemon diehards, but it's extremely challenging for me because again, I'm a huge <laughs> casual. Alright, so let's go ahead and start the run. So. My first team, just gonna pick my favorites, Totodile, Flycoco, and Chikorita. That's me. We're gonna go through my very first run quickly here, just to give you an idea of how the game works. You're first immediately thrown into a battle, and once you win it, you're given a shop in the top row and a choice between three items in the second row. The shop is for recovery items, and you can buy as many items there as long as you have the money, starting off with a thousand Poke Dollars, and earning more through trainer battles. Buy items from the shop first if you need to, because once you pick from the selection of three in the second row, it's on to the next battle. As for the items, in true roguelike fashion, you have items of various rarities that all do different things. You start off with five Pokeballs, and so the Pokeballs here would give you five more. And there are higher grades available. TMs teach your Pokemon moves. Berries are held items that your Pokemon eat for buffs once their HP gets low and then the berry's gone. And there are many more items, including rare items like a Mega Stone bracelet, which lets you find the Mega Stones to Mega Evolve, a Candy Jar, which improves rare candies to give you one more level. Rare items like the Candy Jar have effects that stack. So if you had two Candy Jars, for example, then your rare candies will give three total levels. By the way, you might notice that a lot of TMs have a P symbol in their name. If you see that, that means that part of that move does not work as intended. This could be a buff or a nerf, depends on what's not implemented. I once had a run where I had Focus Punch with that P symbol, a really powerful move with the drawback of missing if the Pokemon using it receives damage before it hits. The drawback is what didn't work, so it's basically a broken move that once I found out, I decided I wouldn't want to use in my runs. Obviously, it's a single player game, play however you like, but I didn't think it would be fun for me to use them. What you definitely want though is uh, some of your Pokemon, they learn moves with the end symbol. If they learn moves with an end symbol, look to get rid of them as soon as you can because those moves just don't work at all. So from here, we easily clear out the Rattata and Meowth. We accidentally teach Totodile Endure, and now we face our biggest challenge yet. Meet Ivy. Ivy is your rival that will reappear on set floors throughout your run. She's one of the only encounters that you can plan for. Whatever team she has first is the one she will continue to build on as your run progresses. You'll see her add more Pokemon to her roster, and all of them will get stronger and evolve each time you encounter her. And let's just say that although she starts off weak, she may start to surprise you, as we'll see later on. Hi, Pierre. I mean, hey, he's level 8. Not very effective. Ow. Ooh, he's gonna outspeed me. It's gonna hurt, too. Oh, he's she swapped it. Oh, wow. That's an interesting move. She probably should have just kept it just to, like, do some damage. I'm gonna have to swap. Oh wait, what? I don't get a I don't get an option to swap. So here is where my confusion as a casual player sort of comes in. Um apparently in the games, the default setting is what is called shift mode. And shift mode basically has the trainer tell you what Pokemon they're going to swap into 
and also gives you an opportunity to swap Pokemon. It gives the player an advantage to swap into a Pokemon that has a more favorable matchup. And I guess most people would consider it unfair to the AI, to the enemy, because they don't really have that same opportunity, which is fair. And that's why I don't really mind having to learn it, but I was caught off guard because I've always played with shift mode as a casual, and now we are playing with set mode. So we managed to defeat Ivy, and your reward for this encounter is a super EXP charm and an EXP all. So here we skip to floor 10, where we encounter a boss hoot hoot. So boss Pokemon or trainers will appear on every 10th floor, and essentially what boss Pokemon have, they have two stages of health. So no matter how strong your first move is, you will never break through that little divider in the middle. So you need at least two attacks to be able to beat this boss. And once you do reach that half point, the Pokemon will stop taking damage and they will also get a buff. You can also catch these Pokemon and they usually have more IVs than most. So here we defeat the boss Hootoot and you're gonna hear it, but after every 10th floor, right? After one of these encounters, your Pokemon team will get a full heal and a full revive. And this is where we meet our end. Wow, this game's already getting like pretty tough and I'm only in the beginning. <laughs> uh, that's gotta suck, right? Basculin, okay. I feel like, why did I swap? Why did I swap? No, dude. Oh God, isn't he like water and steel? Oh my God, he's so strong. He's like faster. He's faster than Pikachu. Okay, that's good. That's good. We can resist it. That's that's what we really need. Oh God. Oh God, come on, dude. Let me move faster. Special defense, Rose. Wow, he swapped it. Okay, wait. Ooh, we did not do that much damage. <laughs> Oh god, dude, this is so... we're so dead. Huh? No, dude. I'm dead. I'm actually just, this is actually the end. I didn't think I would, I didn't, I, I didn't think I would actually lose this fast. I thought, I thought maybe, oh my God. I thought maybe we'd be okay just a little bit, but wow. I, I don't know. I thought I would have made it a little farther. Dang, <laughs> dang. This, oof, big oof. Big oof, the end of the first run, yikes. Wow. So today I learned I suck at Pokemon. <laughs> no, my game's gone, dude. Oh God, wait, but I wanna try again. I do wanna try again, I wanna, I, I wanna keep going. And so I did. Again, again, and again. Poke Rogue's Classic Mode has 200 floors from what I've heard, and I was so determined to get at least past floor 100 with the starter Pokemon. I could use the stronger Pokemon with higher IVs and point values that I've caught earlier in my previous runs, but for me, it had to be with the starters. The starter Pokemon in this game have really basic IVs and stats, and as I've learned, not all of them are made equal. My favorite water starter, Totodile, for instance, doesn't start with Water Gun at level 5, but learns it at level 6. His rage isn't implemented correctly, Sprigatito's leafage never misses, and why would I pick Totodile over Mudkip, who has ground typing as a marsh stomp and so is immune to electricity attacks? And while that might seem like a small difference, Personally, after playing a good bit, I feel like the difficulty of Poke Rogue starts high at the beginning, slopes down when you hit mid-game, which is when you do manage to stabilize with a couple of strong sweepers, then ramps up quick towards the end with all the ridiculous stuff they add into the game. And we're gonna see some crazy things, but it wouldn't be until I realized 
just how important it was to get a good head start where we would see a huge improvement. Okay, here we go again. I mean, it's really fun though. I'm having a lot of fun. I honestly don't like grass types. <laughs> this might be like crazy. I just, I don't know. The grass types, I mean, she learns quick attack though. That's gotta be, that's gotta be good. We have to start with the fire type. Fire types, usually pretty resistant. Fennekin's probably the best one because Fennekin should be faster. Yeah, Marsh Stomp or Mudkip sounds good. I just didn't have the order right. I think this is good. Okay, cool. Yeah, we one-shot this guy. Easy. Pokeball? Lepaberry? X special attack? I don't think we need X special attack. Maybe we just stock up on Pokeball. I did run out last time. Nope. One shot. Rogue Ball. Okay. Wismer. Okay. Swagger. Raises opponent's attack by two stages, inflicts confusion. I'm not a big fan of that. <laughs> and then we just take the free pot. It's fine. Trying to preserve my HP. Big. That's big too. Bite. Flinch. Oh, you can't, you can't flinch. I missed. What? What? No, dude! Why didn't I use leafage, man? I I'm so tilted by like honestly I, I think we need to just slow it down because I'm I'm just like fucking up. If it speeds up, I'm I make the worst decisions. Actually the worst decisions if it's sped up. He has quick attack. She That seems good. Oh, yes. Oh god, I forgot to heal. Okay, so we could lead into a quick attack if our Pokemons die. Okay. Honestly, I think Mudkip's just gonna have to die here. Nice. I don't know what kind of moves... Bulbasaur probably has Razor Leaf, right? So, Tackle or... I mean, that's good. Yeah. Vine Whip, that's fine. Yeah. That makes sense. Fennekin. Ember. I'm surprised she didn't swap. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, so Pick a Peck and Bulbasaur. I need to remember. So, Fennekin's my... A carry. Like, Fennekin's gonna carry my ass. Versus, uh... Versus Ivy, anyway. Ooh! What the hell? Dynamax ban? Max mushrooms become available? What the heck? I'm wondering, like, what can you get from these runs? Because these seem broken. We just gotta spend it. I want Zigzagoon because Covet, for whatever reason, it just seems so good. It does so much damage. I don't know why though. Defense up, speed up. That's big, that's huge. Okay, I want to level up Zigzagoon. I think Zigzagoon's gonna carry my ass. Ooh, Trailblaze, what the hell is that? What's Trailblaze? User's nimble footwork boosts its speed stat. Wait, that's broken. That's sick. Okay, I want to level up Zigzagoon too. Let's do Sand Attack. What? That's a thing? Tail Whip. Dude, this guy's tough. What the hell? He only did 10 damage to me though. Growl. Okay. Let's swap. This guy will tank a bit. Ember. Good damage. Holy... Uh, let's scratch it and see if we could catch it. Might have good IVs, I don't know. And I get a full heal. That's huge value. Special attack minus- Dude, come on. These natures suck!
Beat its ass. Twins, Leah and Lily. I'm gonna beat their ass, dude. I will kill those children. What? String shot, sure. Wait, string shot hits both? Wait, there's no way, like, that matters, right? <laughs> yeah, they only know string shot or something, right? They don't actually know any moves, right? Oh god, he knows tackle. It's okay, he's dead. He got one hit in. Okay, yeah, no, we definitely learned Covet. Covet's so good. Wait, what? It's only a 60. 30% chance to steal the item? That's it? That's all it does? I don't know, dude. I don't know how I keep getting wrecked by Covet, if that's all it does. 60 power? Am I underestimating 60 power? I want to see how big Covet is. Dude, Covet's nuts! Wait, 60 power is insane. Whoa, Raichu? What? Thunder Punch? Oh, you gotta be shitting me, dude. Are you serious? Dude, wait, I gotta catch him. Oh, God. I gotta just catch him. Get his ass. Oh... Okay, I'm gonna get the rogue ball. Don't I have one? Yeah. I have to just try it. What? Are you serious? I might lose patch rat, that's fine. Okay, I... I have to catch this guy. I'm desperate. I need it. Ooh! Hasty, not bad. Oh my god, Fennekin's carrying my ass, dude. Alright, well, the video is getting a little long, so I am going to have to skip ahead and give you the rundown of what happened in between. Before I do that, if you guys do enjoy the content, please make sure you let me know in the comments, leave a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel because it lets me know that I can do more. Maybe even some live streams of Poke Rogue in the future. Follow me on Twitch if you want to see that. So Fennekin would evolve into Brexen and prove to be a great carry with good speed and high damage that was strong against most of the Pokemon on the early floors, including our rival Ivy's Ivysaur. Later, we would challenge Ivy again on floor 25 and defeat her pretty easily. Erica would follow shortly after as the gym leader on floor 30 and prove to be a real challenge. She nearly wipes my entire team with her Blossom spamming Giga Drain. I honestly thought it was over for me, but thankfully, Giga Drain only has 10 PP and my level 17 Fungus managed to tank the last one and the weaker Mega Drains and Absorbs while squeezing in the last damage I needed to take her out. Wait. <gasps> I got it. Maybe? Oh my god, let's go. <laughs> Later, I would face a boss Zangoose on floor 40, who manages to one-shot both my Marsh Stomp and Raichu with Crush Claw. If you notice, Zangoose is holding a Silk Scarf, boosting her normal moves by 20% making her Crush Claw extremely powerful since it's a stab for her. After realizing this, I knew I had to catch her with a Rogue Ball. I used Zangoose to fast climb my way up the floors and along the way picked up a TM for Double Edge, an extremely powerful normal move that comes at a slight cost of damage, but I figured if Zangoose learned this, I'd be unstoppable. My team was starting to look really strong. From floor 70 to 90, I was in Icy Biomes, which gave me Ice Pokemon to fight that Delphox easily cleared. One roadblock along the way, though, was Ursaluna, who managed to one-shot my Delphox with a 9-level difference. Ursaluna's raw stats and performance convinced me to catch him. Eventually, I would transfer the Silk Scarf from Zangoose over to him and replace Zangoose. At floor 90, I easily sweep Melanie with Delphox. At floor 95 is where things get a little dicey, as it was time to fight Ivy again, who opened with a Terrasilized Venusaur? At least, I think it's Terrasilized. I managed to get carried by Ursaluna using Thrash, allowing him to sweep to Cannon, Venusaur, and Kingdra. After clearing Ivy and almost losing to a boss Mesprit that I really wanted to catch, we pick up Dusnar for its defensive bulk and ghost typing. From there, it's smooth sailing, all the way until... No time to mince words. It is now time to fight Ivy, floor 145. Here she opens with a boss Venusaur. Not only is it terrestrialized, it has 
two stages of health? That alone shocked me, but... At this point, I'm stunned. How can I defeat a boss Rayquaza with three stages of health? If I had known I was going to fight Ivy on floor 145, I would have made sure my whole team was fully healed. But she's at half health, and I'm swapping her. Even worse, she's the only one on my squad with Play Rough, a fairy move that actually would deal damage to this dragon-type monster. But Rayquaza is also a flying type, so all hope isn't lost. I swapped to Swampert because he has Rock Slide. This turned out to be extremely effective. I have a great move, and Swampert has a lot of bulk. I take out one stage of its health, but just when I thought I had the upper hand, he flew. I couldn't believe it. I got rid of Protect a long time ago, thinking it wasn't super useful in singles versus AI, but I was dead wrong. I had to think. I needed to save Swamper and Miascarada as they were the only threats to Rayquaza. I also wanted to keep Ursaluna because he's the only one that can threaten things that aren't Rayquaza. I decided to tank the fly with Dust Noir. He landed a crit. My heart sank, but it could have been worse. I decided let's swap back to Swamper to threaten the Rayquaza and she pulls it back. Bombardier is not a problem though. We still have Rock Slide. It's a flying type Pokemon. Tank the knockoff no problem. Hit him with the Rock Slide. Good damage. Of course he would have a Citrus Berry. Try to throw another Rock Slide, but she swaps it out for Venusaur. On top of that, my Rock Slide missed. Swap it out with Zelfox. Better type matchup. Solar Beam, okay. I should be able to take it. Let's hit it with a Flamethrower. At this point, I'm feeling pretty good. We are managing to stay pretty healthy, and we took out one stage of health on a boss Venusaur. Healing with some leftovers there too. Queue up another Flamethrower, but Bombardier comes out. And miraculously, Bombardier tanks the Flamethrower with one sliver of health. I queue up a Flame Charge because I figure I'll be able to outspeed and get a speed buff, but she tanks it with a Kingdra, and that's a bad type matchup. I'm gonna lose the speed buff and I can't stay as Delphox, so let's swap back. I figure I want to still keep Mouscarada to threaten the Rayquaza, and so I think, who can destroy the Kingdra? Well, should be Ursaluna, so let's send out Ursaluna. Ursaluna comes out. We tank a Dragon Pulse, I'm pretty sure. Yep, there we go. Heal it with some leftovers. Ursaluna is another one of my carries with Silk Scarf and leftovers. Hit him with the Thrash, one shots, really nice. I'm ahead, for now. Since we've used Thrash, Ursaluna can only use Thrash for the next three turns. All there's left to do is just hope and pray that I one-shot everyone, which got one, but will it be enough? The worst thing she could do is, yeah, that's the worst. Well, Ursaluna got freed up. It's time to swap to Dusnoir to take the hit. Hopefully when I get the free swap, then I could take out another health bar from Rayquaza. I swap over to Swampert to do a rock slide, but unfortunately that would not be enough because Swampert is slower than Rayquaza and so cannot do a move before Rayquaza flies. I swap over to Hydreigon for a couple reasons. This Hydreigon doesn't have really good moves, but it does have Body Slam and it does have Scary Face. With Body Slam I can hope to paralyze Rayquaza and lower his speed. And Scary Face is also a move that lowers his speed, but I decided to sacrifice Hydreigon because my other Pokemon are a little more valuable and hopefully I could get an initiative on the Rayquaza without him flying away from me. At this point, I'm kind of panicking. I can't find a solution, but thankfully he doesn't fly here. I can hit him with the Rock Slide and we do get him down to the third stage, but he has another Citrus Berry, so we are not done. At this point, I am actually panicking. I send out Miascarada, Rayquaza flies. I have no idea what to do here. I'm thinking, okay, who do I rather lose? Would I rather lose Swamper or Miascarada? And I decided, you know what? It's probably Miascarada. But looking back, it probably should have been Swamper because he had lower health. It is what it is, as they say. So we send out the Swamper over here and try for the rock slide and unfortunately got outsped. At this point, I don't have many options. I think Ursaluna probably is my most valuable Pokemon because he still has plenty of health and thrash, so 
I decide to send out Delphox instead. And we go with the flamethrower and the fly comes out and we are probably not surviving this. I try to run from a trainer battle just in case, but I figure if I do survive, I can burn Rayquaza and lower his attack. And I do, but of course he had a berry to heal the burn. Nothing's working. I figure, okay, sack the Delphox. Let's give the initiative to Ursaluna and just pray that Thrash carries me. I'm thinking Rayquaza is going to use Fly, so I'm going to use Metal Claw here so I don't waste a usage of Thrash. And with my slower speed, I will use Thrash as Rayquaza comes down. I actually got him. My heart was racing. I just need to survive and land the Thrash on three or four other Pokemon. Three Pokemon right there. Okay, Venusaur, Solar Beam, sure, take a free Thrash. Okay, knock him out. Things are looking so good. I think I have one or two more Thrashes in me. And Metagross comes out. Hyper Beam doesn't kill. My Thrash doesn't either, though. And the Thrash ends. I am confused. I just have to pray that I don't destroy myself. So we hit him with the ground move, high horsepower, done. There's only one more left. Ursulina is still confused, but it's a 50-50 chance to hurt yourself in confusion, and Bombardier has one HP. I think a little bit about this move, but I figure, hey, even if somehow Ivy pulls a heal out of her ass, I can thrash and destroy Bombardier. So I full send it, thrash, knock off. Ursulina is still confused. It Failed the roll, it hurt itself in confusion. I just need Thrash to go off, knock off again. I'm confused. It's over. And that's how my run ended. As I sat there in silence, I thought to myself, what did I do wrong? What could I have done better? How could I have saved my Nakama, my precious Pokemon? And now, can I get you to like and subscribe to this channel? Listen, guys, this was super fun and enjoyable. I enjoyed playing the game as much as I enjoyed making the video. I know this is a shot in the dark with my channel since it's a totally different topic, but if you guys did enjoy yourselves, please help boost that algo and I promise to do more. And if not, that's fine too. A friend showed me this game, I thought it was cool, and all I wanted to do was show it to y'all, and now I have. So with that, take care, be safe. My name is Rednu, and I'll see you all on the next one. Peace.